Bobcat Athletics, I'm Maddie Serviente. On today's episode, we will get a position by position breakdown from Coach Francione on both sides of the ball, as well as a question and answer segment with Morgan Micken, as requested by the fans on txstatebobcats.com. But first, let's go to Brant, who's with Coach Fran. Thanks, Maddie. Here we are at the team room at the end zone complex at Texas State, and joining us is head football coach, that is Francione. Spring just wrapped up for the Bobcats, and we had the uh, annual spring game not too long ago, and Coach was Recap things for you this spring. We'll start with the offense and the position everybody wants to know about, and that's your evaluation of the quarterback play. What was your take on how the guys uh, did throughout the spring? You know, they they all improved, which was important. Um, they have not separated themselves from each other, uh, which we are not surprised by. We anticipated that this would take all the way up to the Southern Miss game for us. Um, to make that kind of decision. But the improvement was significant, especially by Jordan Moore, the younger ones. He was, Jordan was selected our most improved offensive player of the spring. And so uh, that was good to see. Um, the battle will continue and, and uh, we'll, we'll see how it all unravels. I think as coaches, uh, especially with Jordan and Duke, we have a, a more keener observation of their talents now uh, with spring practice. and. So as we approach summer, we can pair toward their strengths as, as, as we would with Tyler or whoever would be the starting quarterback. That's something that we know is that uh, whoever the quarterback's going to be isn't going to have a shortage of uh, skill position players to work with. And you're know, looking at the running backs in particular, Chris Nuttall ran very well in the spring game. Robert Lowe made some plays as well. And of course, there's Tim Gay, not to mention um, a couple of guys that will be here in the fall as well. W what was your take on the way the running backs have uh, performed this spring? Well, and you have to men mention Terrence Franks, too, when you talk about those guys. Um, we're, we're solid at running back. Uh, we don't drop off lo much there. From We lost Marcus Curry f from last year's team. But uh, since I've been here, we've had good, solid running backs, and I think that will continue. Um, they all have their strengths. Uh, they all have things that they do better. And so Coach Conway will have to do a good job of substitution. And, and of course, we'll try to improve on their weaknesses, too. Some block better than others. Some run the zone read play better than others. Some run the power play better. Uh, and so we'll try to play to their strengths a, as much as we can. But they need to be able to try to learn to do everything in our offense. Terrence Franks, for instance, has improved as a blocker now. When we started with him, he was a long way away. but. Uh, he's worked at it, and that's been an improvement, and that's been good to see. Each one have their uh, things that they need to improve on, and hopefully they will before we play a game. The 2013 season will see a collection of receivers maybe as, as talented as we've ever seen here at Texas State, but we saw two of them did not play in the spring game at Andy Erickson and Isaiah Battle, dealing with a couple of minor injuries they were held out for the game. Um, but we saw players like Japheth Gaines, uh, Brandon Smith make plays in, in the spring game. Uh, what's your take on receiver play going into the uh, fall? I think we'll be as good or better than we were last year. Um, you have to mention Ben Nige has improved. Uh, and Deshane Milburn's got a lot of experience there. Uh, you're talking about Andy Erickson and Isaiah Battle when you say they didn't play toward the end. and um, we, we missed them uh, in spring practice, but uh, those are two proven players that have played a lot of football for us, and we expect to have good senior years. Uh, Brandon Smith is, is proving to be maybe as fine a receiver as we have or as we've had since I've been here. Uh, he's very fluid and very smooth and uh, our DBs would tell you he's, he's the hardest guy to cover. So, um, you know, we're, we feel pretty good about where we're at at that position. Yeah, Ben Aisha had a couple of really impressive touchdown catches in the spring game. Brandon Smith had a really nice one called back due to a penalty. Looking at tight end, uh, you obviously you lose a, a really important player in Chase Harper, so there's questions of how do you replace that? Well, I thought in the spring game, the play of David Lewis and Chris Peterson, just a couple of tight ends that can help uh, fill, fill that void left behind. Well, we shouldn't drop off there, though. Um, I, I probably overall was a little disappointed uh, with the entire spring with our tight ends. I think they're better than what they showed, and I think they would say that too. 
Uh, David Lewis coming off injury and missing most of last year. Uh, we're counting on to, to give us a good performance and he has all the tools to do that. Chris Peterson, you can't be disappointed with him. It was his first 15 practices in a new offense and uh, practice 15 was significantly better than practice one. He got better as we went along and I think we leave spring feeling very good about his progress and what he can do for us. Um, Brad Miller uh, played a lot last year and did a lot of good things. Uh, Brad's spring was probably a little up and down. We expect more out of Brad and I think Brad expects more out of Brad and I think we'll have that. Kobe Goodwin is a, is a guy that can spell some people in there too. So uh, I don't think we're, you know, Chase Harper was, was a great player, but I don't think we're going to drop off significantly at that position. And with as much as we utilize tight ends, we, we don't need to drop off. It's fun to talk about the backs and receivers and the guys throwing the football, but an offense does not work without the cohesiveness of an offensive line. And you're replacing two starting tackles from a year ago in Adley Ashagapur and Thaddeus Watkins. You do have some returners there, and you're going to be going into year two with Adrian Ballard, who was a highly uh, touted recruit out of uh, Brenham. Uh, throughout the spring, what was your uh, thoughts on the way the offensive line started to come together? Well, you know, Coach Shaw came in and um, – I don't want to say it was a learning curve with him and the guys because they had great carryover in what we were doing, but uh, it was a little bit of a change and it was a positive change. I, I think they adapted well to him and he adapted well to them and uh, he made a, uh, his mark with them. Um, I have hopes that we'll be better in the offensive line next year. Uh, and the reason I say that is that we, we didn't graduate a lot this year like we did last year starting over. Uh, Adley had moved over to the offensive line last year. Adrian had about 100 snaps last year, so he's got some experience under his belt. Uh, Devin Baker's pretty proven there. A guy that I thought had the best spring of all the linemen was Ryan Melton. Ryan Melton has a chance to be a really good offensive lineman. Uh, Matt Freeman wasn't available to us in the spring, but so Colin Fissel and Tyler Potter did nice jobs in there at center, and I think Matt coming back will be significant. Matt was one of our toughest, hard-nosed guys in that offensive line. The other guard position is kind of in a swing mode right now. Felix Romero certainly made a mark in there. Zach Crawford, Mike Yoder are going to compete very, very well. And then, of course, we're pretty stable with Charlie Tuttle uh, right now at the other guard coming back and the experience he has. So I really do feel like uh, our line has a chance to be better than it was last year. Uh, and I think the next year we can finally start to say that our line ought to be where it is. We, you know, we started with only six or seven offensive linemen when we got here a couple of years ago, and four of those were seniors. Two of them were partial scholarship guys. So it's been a, it's been a labor to, to rebuild this offensive line. Well, the progress is there. And, Coach, that's a look at the offense coming up later in the show. We'll talk about the Bobcat defense and a recap throughout the spring. Baseball is on an impressive nine-game home winning streak. Here are some highlights from the last four games, which includes a three-game sweep over Louisiana Tech and a midweek win over Big 12 opponent Baylor. So here comes the 2-2 pitch from Black. Now it's swung on and missed. So Taylor Black retiring the third out. Any sport you can just walk to if you live near campus. Exactly. Stump hits that one over the third baseman's head as Micken rounds third and comes home for the first run of this ball game. Texas State now leading one to nothing. Stump with a big time hit. Texas State with the first run of this game. Limke needing that to get out of this inning. Delivery swung on and C struck him out. Got out of that big time spot there. Two outs. Runner on third. Bobcats trying. To close this one out, the pitch from Lipke swung out, hit in the center field. It's going back. Center fielder's under it, and he makes the catch and records the out. The Bobcats win this one, one to nothing, and take down the Bulldogs in this first of three.
up delivery. This one swung on. It's going to go in between the third baseman, Tui, and Miller. The Bobcats are going to bring one around before they get the ball back into the diamond. So an RBI single there for Stump, and the Bobcats take the 1-0 lead. Leading the team in home runs this year with five, hitting 262 on the year. That pitch is swung on and missed for a strikeout, so two big whiffs there. <laughs> in the crowd tonight. First pitch to Toth is bunted down the third baseline. Smelzer charges, makes the throw, and gets him at first base. What a play by Nick Smelzer. So Landry sets back up, checks over at the runner at second. This one swung on, hit in the left. It's driven, it's driven, it is gone! It hits the net in left field, and that is a two-run home run by Cody Lovejoy. His first home run of the season, and that gives the Bobcats a 3-0 lead here in the bottom of the third. And an absolute bomb by Cody Lovejoy. No doubt about that one right off the bat. The wind is blowing directly out to left field, but that would have been gone no matter what the wind was doing. Like you said, about halfway up that net in left field to prevent the ball from going onto the softball field. But right off the bat, immediately you knew that that ball was gone and Lovejoy gives the Bobcats a 3 nothing lead. Coming up after the break, senior center fielder Morgan Micken answers questions submitted by you on Facebook and Twitter. All in on three, one, two, three. All in. Innovation. Exploration. Creative discovery. These are the trademarks of Texas State University. As the state's newest emerging research university, we're transforming your world one mind at a time. Your world, our research. Texas State University, the rising star of Texas. I'm Morgan Micken from Georgetown, Texas. I'm a senior. You guys wanted a little interview with me on TXStateBobcast.com, so here we go. Am I better than my dad was at this stage of my career? Um, I'm probably going to have to go with a no looking at the stats wise. I think I want to say I have more talent than he did, but as far as playing, uh, you know, baseball, he played at Southwestern in, in Georgetown, NAIA back in the day. He got to play all four years. I've had a little bumps in the road being able to play. I think, uh, you know, he he was a great player. I think I might have him on the tools, but uh, so maybe I, I'd have to catch up to him a little bit. That's a good question. My biggest role model would have to be Cody Gamble. I've looked up to him all five years that I was with him. I love that guy. If you want the serious side of it, I'm gonna say uh, my, my biggest role models would have to be my parents. I know it's kind of cliche to say, but they've, uh, you know, I think they've instilled some some good morals in me and uh, I really look up to him. As far as baseball player that I model myself around, I want to say Curtis Granderson. Um, I, I kind of try to look at how, uh, how he plays the game, kind of how he sets up in the box, outfield position. I think we kind of we look like, do similar things as far as uh, on the field. So I'd have to say that's kind of who I, I model myself around. What do I like most about playing at Texas State? You know, I love, I love making friends, I love making family, and I can call everyone my family on the team. You know, we have great fans. Uh, it's a great scenery everywhere you go. I'm, I mean, everyone, the supporting cast is great, and uh, it's, just, it's just cool to be around a family atmosphere. As cool as the game saving diving catch would be, I'd have to say uh, hitting, a, hitting a home run for the walk-off win would be a little bit cooler just because all eyes are on you at that moment. You know, your offense is on the field and 
Well, I'm not too sure that there's a better feeling than walking one off. All right, guys, uh, thanks for all your questions. Hope we see you out on the field for the, for the rest of the season, and uh, hopefully we'll see you in the playoffs. Go Cats. After the break, Coach Fran will break down the defensive depth chart position by position. Back at the team room at the end zone complex with Bobcat head football coach that is Francione. Earlier in the show, we talked all about the offense and looked back at uh, the O in the spring. Now here's a look at the defense throughout the spring. And, and we went through position through position with the offense coach. Let's do the same with defense. Let's start up front for you on the defensive line. I know it's something that you've made a big emphasis uh, with since you came back to Texas State. Um, and you have a couple new players there, namely DJ Injury on the defensive line is one of the big names that uh, is new to the, uh, to, the, to the front four. What were your thoughts on the way uh, the D-line improved throughout the course of the spring? Uh, I thought our defensive tackle position is as strong as it's been since I've been here. And, of course, D.J. Endry is a big key to that. Now, let's face it, this guy played in the Rose Bowl against Wisconsin for TCU. He ran 4-6 uh, on timing day the other day. Uh, he's going to end up playing at about 270, 275 next fall and, and he is a good football player. He, he may be our best defensive football player. Uh, and his presence alone and the experiences that he's had I think helped uh, upgrade the entire defensive tackle position. Uh, Blake McCullough stepped his game up like just power clean 363 in the weight room yesterday. Uh, so I, I expect those two to give us a good anchor inside and to make plays and uh, for us to be as solid in there as we can. Darius Hood came along and really was one of the, the good, pleasant uh, experiences of spring practice because his quickness and presence was felt. Uh, we got to get his weight where we need it to be and, and for him not to lose speed but still be big enough uh, to anchor in there. Uh, Camu Talele, you know, was coming off some hernia surgery and uh, was a little up and down in the spring, but I think he'll, he'll be more prepared for the fall. And there's some other guys there, Dallas McClarty and uh, Donald Hopkins and people that um, certainly uh, need to grow and, and be able to give us snaps next fall. And w the most important thing about the play of the defensive line will give you, if you can get a pass rush out of those four, it'll give you the ability to do more with your linebackers as opposed to having you know, constant blitz packages as well. And we saw that in, sp in the spring, in, in the spring game, that the, the front four was able to get some pressure on the quarterback. Well, that's a pretty pivotal uh, area that we need to improve on. We, we were not very good at getting much pressure, uh, or enough pressure, I should say, probably, with the front four. Um, I think those two tackles can give us some, uh, but that's an area that we need to be better at. And uh, we can mix and match things up a little bit with the defense, but um, being able to, to at least make the quarterback throw off rhythm without a blitz uh, is going to be keen to our improvement. We mentioned linebackers, and maybe of all your defensive positions, this may be the deepest uh, with, with talent. And you look at uh, the addition of Michael Rackpo, who had a, a really good spring in his first spring here with you at Texas State. David Mayo didn't play the game, but Jared Jeter Gilman did, played well. Damian McMiller is, is also there for you at linebacker. What was your evaluation of the LBs throughout spring? I think we're, we're as deep as we've ever been since I've been here. I think linebacker is a strength position. You know, the old baseball cliche is to be strong up the middle with, well, with uh, defensive tackle and linebacker, I think we can be strong up the middle. Uh, those guys all um, played well for us in the spring. Damon McMiller really raised his game, played well. Uh, David Mayo got nicked and banged up later in spring, but we, we know what David can do. He plays really hard. Jared Jeter Gilman is, is a, a good, solid player in there. Uh, we, we feel pretty good about where we are at that position right now. Now, the secondary, there's been some moving parts. You had Xavier Daniels at safety a year ago. He's been moved to corner, playing opposite of Craig Megger, who Megger had an interception of the spring game. He'll be entering in, enter his uh, junior season. He's been a very impressive corner for you throughout his first two years. So the secondary, um, what's, what's happening with that position right now as you uh, get ready for the 2013 season? 
Well, you know, we had to replace Daryl Morris, and uh, the guy who's uh, probably played a little bit out of position because of necessity was Xavier Daniels. You know, he's only about 170 pounds. That's pretty light for a free safety because our safeties do have to be pretty active in run support. Uh, and he did a nice job of that. He's a good hitter, but corner is probably the position that best suits him. And um, though he still has a long ways to go learning all the techniques and things that we teach out there, uh, I think he's got a chance to be, that's the best position for him. And then with Craig at the other corner, um, you know, Craig's a pretty proven player. He, life on the island's no big deal for him. He, he'll go out there and he likes to have the best receiver on his side. Uh, and, and that mentality uh, uh, coupled with his uh, athletic ability makes him a pretty special player. Probably Craig and, and DJ are our two best defensive players today. Defense as a whole, what needs to happen for this unit to be successful uh, in this upcoming season, which is going to be another tough schedule for you? Well, uh, I think two or three things. Um, some pressure on the quarterback. Uh, we got to do, do much better uh, at, at first down defense and defending the run. Uh, we need to put them behind the chains a little more often than we were able to do last year. You know, in a game, uh, second and five, is an offensive dictated down. Second nine is a defensive dictated down. And we didn't get ourselves in enough of those uh, situations where we could dictate play a little bit more uh, th than we were able to. Um, I, th I think we'll be a little bit more uh, pressure conscious this year than we were last year, uh, which is good. Um, we need for Jordan Northfleet and Jamie Clavell Head and uh, Thomas Evans and Justin Booth and uh, Mabel Michael Odiari, who was really a, kind of the surprise of spring practice on the defense, or one of the surprises. We need for those guys to at least collapse the pocket a little bit better than we were able to last year at times. I think our safety positions will work themselves out with time. Uh, Damani Alexi had a, a nice spring at free safety. Demetrius Woodard uh, had a concussion, kind of missed the middle part of spring, got off to a good start, slowed down with the injury, then came back a little bit. I think he'll be okay. He's familiar with this defense. Brandon Jones really came along. Uh, we're excited about his play. Uh, Justin Wuji is always going to be a solid player for us. And Aaron Matthews, we redshirted last year, so he, he's a senior uh, this year that will play. And So I, I think between those guys, we have Trey Garrett coming in, uh, another junior college kid who we're pretty excited about. I think we have a chance to solidify our safety positions. Uh, and, you know, our, our whole football team, I, I think if you cap, capsulized everything, you'd say uh, the two things that have to happen is uh, we need to get better on defense, uh, which statistically we weren't very good last year on defense. We've, uh, we've played some darn good offensive football teams that had something to say about that. But if, if we can knock 40 or 50 yards off our defense, save numbers and some points off our defensive numbers, and if our quarterback situation will solidify and, and they don't have to win the game, but if they can avoid losing the game and take care of the football and manage the game within the structure of the offense, I think, you know, we averaged almost 29 points a game last year offensively. So if the quarterback situation can solidify, I think we can duplicate that because our receivers, our line, our running backs, our tight ends, we shouldn't drop off a great deal from last year. Uh, and then if we can get better on defense, and, that, and that's the two keys. Now, I, I look for Will Johnson. We haven't talked about kicker and punter, but I look for Will Johnson going into his junior year uh, to have a solid year for us, a uh, great leg, uh, whether it's him or, or Zach uh, Robinson punting. We have two guys uh, that really punt the ball really well there. Uh, so far in my two years, we've been fairly good in the kicking game. Uh, here and fairly solid. We need to continue that. And when you have those two guys and Ryan Williams as your deep snapper to build around, you're, you're reasonably solid. And now we got to cover and, and block and do the little things in the kicking game that give us a chance to be successful. Well, let's look back at the spring, Coach. Can't wait to see what's in store for the fall. Me too. All right. Thanks for checking out Inside Bobcat Athletics, and be sure to check us out next time for more behind the scenes action.